I want to start with, you know, I think that it's really important as Vanessa brought to the forefront vocabulary and I, you know, across the board, you know, in the medical world and the spiritual world and across the ways words are being used with a multitude of definitions and, you know, sometimes bastardized as to as far as the person that actually experienced them yeah and so you know and in the spiritual world i guess i'm trying to give some um levity and some something some more tangibility is that a right word to um some of these experiences that people are having because you know if you're having a spiritual experience you should have some words around it you should have something changing in your life for that spiritual experience to be more than just an idea yeah you know so and can i just say too i know we were struggling with the word um we were like vocabulary like we don't really love that it came to me. It's our vernacular. Vernacular. Perfect. Perfect word. It's yeah. perfect. It yeah. is QT and vernacular. Like our def, you know, communal definitions to these words to be able to talk about it, right? Because like firstly, I want to start at the beginning with like a single event trauma. Right? Now, a single event trauma would be someone who even may be highly sensitive, but was supported through that, like through their lifetime. And really like maybe got sideswiped by a death or a car accident or going to war, you know, loud noises, a fire, right? And in those experiences, there's a beginning and an end, right? There's, um, you know, it's usually a very direct cleanup, right? And being able to go, okay, like this person had this ginormous car accident and life has been sideways since. So we know that we're really working within that time frame. And, um, you know, again, that is single event trauma, which is PTSD right that's different than complex trauma which is um a daily experience yeah this is like a child living you know not knowing that tomorrow is true doesn't know um you know everything around them is unpredictable um traumatic events are happening you know weekly daily every other day right nothing around them is stable yeah and um that is where we move into that really complex space that is like you know in my mind in my opinion right almost a step in depth of uh, complexity as far as maneuvering life afterwards than this, you know, being imprisoned, like held captive, right? Like concentration camp, that level of, of like it's happening to you and it's happening to those you love. And together as a unit of love, you're trying to fight it, right? Which is different than those that, quote, are love you are also the captors and the persecutors or torturers, right? They're sometimes withholding food, right? Withholding safety, yeah? And hitting you upside the head and saying they love you all at the same time, right? You know, 
when your caregiver and um, guardian and torturer are all the same, like there is no place to put any sort of trust, right? And if you do, it's at arm's length, right? Because they're not here. Does that make sense? And in that, pardon my French mind fuck, right? Is that, you know, often the one that is being truly tortured the most is in this obsessive, bizarre way, loved the most as far as whatever that means over here. Often kids will say that, oh, well, he loves me. I have to protect him, right? Or, you know, I know my mom used to tell me, oh, you do know he loves you the most, right? And it's like, okay, well, what does that mean, then? right? Right, what does that mean? And I think for those kids, they're, you know, if somebody outside of your unit is causing harm, it's very clear that that's not about love. In that really abusive home, we have to understand that the, the most basic foundation of humanity is family, relationship, and love. I mean, that's the core of humanity, right? And, you know, we also have to understand that most of our children aren't getting it. And that is creating a, a level in humanity where, where we, we're desensitized to what we're seeing out in front of us, right? Does that make sense? Right, so being able to untangle that and start teaching a person how to care about someone else, right, is a huge part of that complex trauma because they may think they are, but when you're in survival mode and you're in defense mode, you're really caring about yourself first, right? And even if you're helping people along the way, does that make sense too, right? Again, back to that feeling so alone, right? Now also in that complex trauma, the fragmentation is, um, is so huge because they're very small, right, as that's happening. So adulthood becomes very difficult because, you know, just energetically, life force is not present, right? And some of those larger, those smaller fragments have more life force than what's trying to live today. Does 